Thank you for joining us. For the interest of time, we will get started. Um, okay, so today uh, we are going to talk about how to save time by creating question banks. And um, this is a very interesting uh, tool that we are going to be using today. Before I dive in, before we dive in, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Lily Alvarez, and I am a client success manager. Before joining Formative, I was an architect and an international baccalaureate innovation teacher. Um, I'm a cat owner, and here in Formative, I work mainly with international schools. Wonderful. Some things to know before we get started. Um, this session will be recorded. So it will be available later. It usually takes about a week uh, to get posted in our training center. Um, this session is, is, is scheduled to be um, 30 minutes long, might be a little bit less. And please type any questions that you might have in the chat. I'll be happy to, to answer those. Great. So some of our learning objectives um, that we will cover today. We will learn what is a question bank, uh, how to create a question bank, how to organize your question banks, and how to use your question banks. Everything is, uh, is done so that you can save time as you are creating formatives. Okay, so what is a question bank? So a question bank is a folder with informative that we use to save questions. We can either save them by subject, by topic, or by standard. Um, and you can be more creative than that, and you can have many other categories in which you can save your different question types. Um, and later, once you have done that, you can easily grab them. And it's kind of like a pre-made content that is available for you so that you can build formatives really quickly. Um, and also, it's a really good way to keep your formatives organized and save time. OK, so let's dive in. And you can follow along, or you can also enter formative. I'm already logged in, so I'm just going to go to my dashboard. Okay, and I have pre-made a formative. This one that is called Navy Math Trigonometry and Algorithms. So as you can see, I already have three questions here. Uh, for my international baccalaureate math class. Um, and I want to build on top of this. I want to add more questions and I want to keep building on trigonometry and algorithms. So one really easy thing to do here in Formative that I love is that you can simply click on the plus sign here. You can go here in the bottom right that it says grab from library click on search from ex existing questions. And I already kind of like started searching. So you can either choose from your formatives or from the library. Right now we're gonna choose from the library. We want you to, to see, so, okay. So I'm gonna say IV, trig, yes. So I found that someone else already published something in the library, in the public library that we have here in Formative um, for international baccalaureate um, on trigonometry. So I'm gonna click in here and I want to add this to my formative. So I'm gonna click add. Okay, and then I'm gonna add the question number one. I'm gonna add the question number two because I think it's important. I also want to ask my student what is the value of B. Okay, and I want to, and that's it. Those are the ones that I need right now. So I simply close this, okay? And I have instantly added these questions from the library. Okay, so now I can actually share this with my students and I can assign this to my class. Now, everything that I'm copying from the library will come with um, 
would come with the same specific, like if, if the person that created the formative um, has tackled on show your work, it will come with show your work. If the person that created um, that question that you copied from the library has standards, it will automatically transfer the standards. In this case, they don't have standards, but I am going to show you how to add standards. Okay, so this is the international evaluated math. So I haven't added that standard set to my formative, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to click here in my first question, tag to standards, because I haven't added my standards for international baccalaureate, I'm going to click on the plus sign, plus add new standard set. I'm going to click here, international, I'm going to type international baccalaureate, and then I'm looking for mathematics. And then these specific um, topics, are from the IV applications and interpretations. So I'm gonna click here and I'm simply going to add the standards. Okay, so now I can add the standards to this formative. And I am just going to say, um, trigonometry. I'm gonna start adding my international baccalaureate standards. And I want to um, add something about algorithms. So you can start adding the standards to your, uh, to this uh, formative. So later, this can be also part of your formative question bank, which is, I think it's, it's wonderful. So I can tag standards. So, and if you don't know, uh, for example, what standards correspond to uh, trigonometry and algorithm. I will show you something else. So yes, I've already added the standards here, but I can also go to commonstandardproject.com. I can search for the international accurate standards. So I'll just go to, I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna find math. You know, find applications and interpretation. So I can actually see the standards here, right? So as I'm tagging standards, I can always go back to the common standard project and I can pull some of the standards from here into my uh, formative. So I'm building a, a formative for international baccalaureate math, trigonometry and algorithms, and that's there, okay? Okay, and let's say I have finished my, uh, bank of questions for trigonometry and algorithms. So I'm gonna go back to my dashboard and you will see that I have one folder that is in Lily's question bank. You can create a folder like this and you can say um, Paula's question bank by clicking here in the plus folder sign on the left. You click here and you simply create a folder, you name it and you add it. So I'm gonna to go to my question bank and you'll see that inside that question bank, inside that folder, I have more folders. So I have resources, I have holidays, I have standards, topic, and question types. In this case, I am going to go by topic. And I also have inside topic, I have decided to have two different uh, folders, one for Spanish, one for math. I'm going to go to math. I don't have an international baccalaureate folder, so I'm actually going to create a new one. IV math, I'm gonna add it. Okay, so now I have this folder, okay? And remember, I created a formative that, we, that was going to work or that is going to work as my, um, as my question bank, okay? So I went back to my formatives, so I went back to my dashboard, and now I am going to click here. This is a formative that we created together. I'm going to click here, select it, and then I'll click on move. I will look for my question banks. I'm going to go by topic, math, IV math. I'm going to move it there. So now when I go to my question bank and I click on topic, math, IV math, I already have this folder here 
with standards and with the topic for, of trigonometry and alg algorithms. And I can keep building this um, math folder, this Ivy math folder with more, with more um, uh, topics, okay? So let's go back to my actual question bank. Let's go back to my folder, the list question bank. Um, so this is a very good way that I found to organize my question bank. I decided to create a folder for resources where whenever I have questions, for example, on how to embed uh, sites into my formatives or how to... Um, add elements of art or um, how to, you know, what are great sites to embed for middle and high school students or different ways to show your work. Then I can always come here into my question bank and I can see, you know, some ideas for, of this. Okay. Great. So that's for resources. I have many more, for example, holidays. I don't know. Um, Thanksgiving is coming soon. And um, I have here some Thanksgiving formatives. So I can always come here and I can always clone these formatives or use some of the questions of these formatives to build other formatives. And now something really, really interesting that I've done here is the standards. And with the standards, um, as you know, there's many standards I just showed you, right? So I have done, um, I've created different formatives with different question types and standards stack to it. So if I'm going to build a formative and I want to add, let's say I'm going to build a chemistry form formative and I want them to already have standards, what I'm doing actually is I'm creating a formative and I'm naming it IV chemistry. And here, instead of the question, I am adding a standard. Sorry, I'm not adding a standard. I'm adding a question and I'm adding the standards here in the bottom. So I can actually pull out from here um, and create a formative for IV chemistry. Let's go to math. This is the one that I wanted to show you. Okay, so here I have created an international baccalaureate math with the 2019 standards. And that, that's how I named my formative. And so what I've done, and this is a little bit different, but I've created, um, let's say, two sections with the, within my formative. One for standard level of the um, math in the IB, in the International Baccalaureate, and a second one for higher level. So what I've done is that I've already tagged the standards to my formative and so I have them by standard level and, and higher level. And so what I'm doing is I am adding standard level sta um, questions with standards already here, for example, for number and algebra. So what I can do later, I can always use these ones to create questions and they already have the standards on it. And I'll show you how to do that. So as you can see, functions and the standards for functions are tagged here in the bottom. Geometry and trigonometry, the standards are tagged here in the bottom. So I don't have to, when I'm creating a formative, I don't have to look for each of the standards. Um, as I show you, go to the common standards project. No, because I already have them here. So it's very easy to pull question types with standards tag on it from here. And down here, I have the higher level. Same thing. Functions with the standards for higher level, geometry and trigonometry with the standards here in, in uh, higher level. Okay, so this lives within my question bank. Now I'm gonna go back to my dashboard and I'm going to go back to my formatives. And now I want to show you how useful is this. So I am actually going to create a new formative and I am going to call it math IV example. So I want to build something on trigonometry and algorithms again with the International Baccalaureate Program. And I want to add my questions um, and I want to build on top of question types that already have the formatives. 
And it's super easy because I have my question bank. So I'm just going to click here in the plus sign, like here. I'm going to search again, grab from library, search from ex existing questions. Now, instead of going to the public library, I'm going to go to my formatives. Right. Now, something really important is that you here you will have to search your questions with um, the bank name, right? So, okay. And I can also search, sort this by day updated, day created. Okay, I'm gonna search by day created. So I am going to click here. Actually, let's do this. I'm going to click this one and it's math, math 2019. These are my question types from my, um, from my question bank with a standard stack of them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add this one because I'm teaching standard level and add this one other. And let's say I want to add one additional higher level uh, functions one. Okay, and I close this. And then here I can start, I can start um, creating a formative. Okay, so let's say I want to minus three, and this is just an example. This is not um, exactly And um, I'm going to use this opportunity. If you don't know how to use LaTeX, uh, this is a great tool that we have, to, we have here in Formative. And um, as you can see, I have written this expression. And if I select it, this little edit menu comes up and I can click on LaTeX. And this is what my students will see. So if I go to the student preview, I'm going to click on, the, I'm going to say they're using actually a laptop. You know, my students are seeing this, right? With the latex option. Okay, so as you can see, I build um, a mathematical expression here that already has the standard stack done. So I can keep working on this formative and I can keep adding more problems, more equations, and the standards will already be there, right? Um, and you might have, you might want to do this with different question types. So you might want to do this with uh, video stamping, or you might want to do this with, um, uh, with numeric, or, you know, there's so many different question types. And you can actually, with the standards, once you already have the standards here, you can actually click on the question type and you can change, you know, whatever question type you might want to to use, for example, I want to use true or false, I'll say yes. And my standards will still be here, which is, I think it is wonderful. Okay, so let's go back. So this is one way of doing it. Let's go back to my question types. And now let's say that I want to create a formative with the holidays. So I'm actually, so I have all here, all these different, um, all these different formatives with different holidays. And let's say, I'm going to go back to my dashboard. I'm going to create a new formative. I'm going to call it Thanksgiving. And again, I'm going to click here, search for existing questions, my formatives. I'm going to see what do I have Thanksgiving. That's the one that we just created. That's why it has zero questions. And I can add all the questions that I want from the different formatives. I can even pull, I don't know, perhaps I, I want this to be Thanksgiving and Christmas. So I can add this as well. 
So as you can see, everything transfers. And the reason why I'm so showing you Thanksgiving is because if you, you can see that this is a different type of question, this is an image and we have added the um, questions right here. So even this one's transfer. And in this case, for example, we do have, for example, um, in some of the questions, for example, this multiple selection, we have added the correct answer so that it can auto grade. We have added allow partial credit, so and randomize order, and all of that transfers when I use questions from my question bank, which I think is wonderful. And I will share right now um, how to grab an article and how to grab and edit a copy of a formative from my library, your library. Okay, so this here, and feel free to check this article out and um, it will show you how to, how to um, add questions from other formatives that are in the library that are published. Okay, so you see the answer key is here. Also here, the answer key is here and I just added the question. I literally just pull it out from a different formative. Okay, so now something wonderful as well is that you can actually collaborate um, in your question bank. So this is my question bank, right? And I have all these resources. And let's say I'm gonna click here on the left and I'm gonna select my question bank. And let's say I want to share this. I want uh, one of my colleagues to collaborate with me on, you know, on, on using my, on, on helping me build my question bank. So I can actually click on my question bank and then this menu will appear and I can add her as a collaborator. So I'm gonna add one of my coworkers. Let me switch my, there we go. So I'm gonna add Vina as my collaborator and I'm going to allow her to edit and assign whatever um, question banks I have there. And I'm gonna say add, and I can share this and I can add collaborators, um, you know, as many as I want. I can always remove these collaborators and I can even, um, for example, I could add Vina to just one specific class, let's say, she is also a math teacher, so I can add her as a collaborator for my question bank for I for math uh, for math for international baccalaureate math. Now, let's say someone I have a colleague teaching in a different school or someone else from a different grade, um, and I want to give them a copy of my question bank. I can also do that by either giving them the cloning code, which is right here, or giving them the link, which also is here. Let's say I want other teachers to benefit of my question bank. I can also publish this into the library, into the public library with informative. So teachers from other schools around the world, because we are all around the world, teachers from all around the world are using um, this tool. You can always also publish this to the library. And I can change the name of my of my my folder of my question bank perhaps i don't want to say i don't want to share my name i want to say the national baccalaureate question bank right and i can publish this i can upload a picture or i can take a picture for my uh, folder within the library and i can also select which folders from my question bank do i actually want to share perhaps i don't want to share um, you know, my question types, perhaps I want to keep those for myself so I can deselect just by clicking here. Perhaps with the standards, I don't want to share the computer science and chemistry. I just want to share biology and math. See, so here I have all of this. And with math, as you can see, I have, when I, in my question bank, I have also by topic. So I have math, IV math, fifth grade math, and I have a ton, a ton, a ton. So I can select what, I'm, what, I, what I want to publish in the library. Now I can also select the grades and I have to like, I can select different grades. So 
them teaching third grade and 12th grade. Perhaps you're also teaching higher education or adult education. We can select the different topics. Something smart over there, have something about Calc. And then who can access the formatives in this bundle? This is also very interesting because you can make them completely public, which means anyone around the world can, will be able to access your library. Or you can publish it only for your school, teachers within your school. In this case, my school is Formative Academy. So I, let's say I just want to share with Formative Academy with my school. Or with my math department, let's say within your school, there's departments. So all of these are different departments. So this is something that you can do. And, and when you finish, you can also add a, a, like a short description to it. And um, for people to know what, are, what is this formative about. And then you can just simply click create. And you will be creating a question bank for your school, your department, or, um, or even for uh, the entire people, the entire teachers that are using formative. Great, and now I will also share another article on how to combine your formatives or add a question from the library. Okay, you can check it out. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions and I will be here a few minutes. Also, don't forget to leave us some feedback and I will share a quick survey so that you can fill it out and Tell us what you think about this webinar. Have a wonderful night. Thank you so much.